a reminder, please note that board meetings are being recorded for the convenience of those unable to attend. A recording and closed captioning will be posted to the BIRD YouTube channel following the meeting. Alex, please call the call. Peter Calandrella. Uh, Isaac Carmignani. Present. Uh, Jenny Chacon. Present. Uh, April Chapman. Present. Uh, Jose Davila. Present. Uh, Deborah Dillingham. Michael Kraft. Here. Uh, Vanessa Lennon. Uh, Gary Lennon. Here. Uh, John Matterich. Present. Donald Nesbitt. Uh, Lindsay Oates. Here. Uh, Laurie Professor. Shannon Wade. Here. The first order of business is calendar item number one, noting the minutes of the meeting of the Board of Retirement held on July 25th, 2018. The minutes have been previously provided to the Board by the Sheriff's website. May I have a motion to consider the minutes from the July 25th board meeting? Second. Please raise your hand if you vote to approve the minutes. Please raise your hand if you vote not to Any abstentions? Okay. Okay. Motion carried. Um, exactly the director's update. Next on the agenda, Sandy, would you like to share any remarks with us? Thanks, Lindsay. Uh, sure. Just let me run through some meetings that are coming up uh, for everyone's benefit. Uh, we have been sending out emails, and it's posted to the controller's website at the uh, Fossil Fuel Investment Advisor RFI uh, communications meeting is Monday from 10 to 3 at 1 Center Street. Uh, we will have staff there. Uh, it's going to be a fascinating competition between people who think we're dopey to sell fossil fuels and people who think we're dopey to use them and people who think we're dopey to invest in them. It will actually be a fascinating process. Uh, we're spending a lot more time on ESG uh, questions and uh, just from my own view and Antonio's view, it's going to impact us more and more as something we're going to have to keep an eye on. There may be a tipping point coming on this issue. At least that's my opinion. To the horror of Mr. Wright, perhaps. <laughs> um, and actually, my horror. So, certainly, so. Uh, Trustee education opportunities, a whole series of these things. Um, just to remind you, the Mayor's Office of Pension and Investment, Public Pension Trustee Fiduciary Conference, New York Law School, October 2nd and 3rd. Uh, we have 11 trustees and staff registered to attend. Uh, we will remind you of attendance. This is going to be uh, an opportunity to network with other trustees in the city and, and outside um, New York State. And um, last year's program was quite good, so uh, this should be very and it's local, New York Law School. Uh, the NC First Public Safety Conference and the Accredited Fiduciary Program is October 27th to 31st. We only have two trustees signed up for this. Uh, if, if you, we can still sign up people. Uh, if anyone needs information on this, uh, be happy to supply it. The NAF, their Accredited Fiduciary Program, is a very good educational program. Uh, I think Isaac has a certi certificate from having done all four of the uh, classes. Uh, if anyone has questions, I'm sure he would respond to that. Uh, the, and also to point out, in January, we will have our first educational conference dedicated to our trustees. Antonio is organizing that. Um, this conference will be the 12th and 14th of January, 2019. It also uh, uh, abuts an, another educational conference, which is independent of uh, New York City and BRRRS, which is also a in my opinion, a quality uh, educational offering in a much smaller setting than in Seepers, which I personally uh, find valuable. Uh, we have nine, nine trustees uh, pre-registered for that. Uh, if you have any questions about this, please come to me. Um, remember that we pay all expenses. This is all uh, educational for uh, trustees. And I would encourage you to do multiple, multiple educational opportunities over the years. I mean, this is a it's an important thing for trustees. Um, the Velocity Project, uh, our new computer system, which was approved, uh, the team meeting begin next week. Uh, we expect to, we expected at this meeting to uh, request 
approval of the contract with Vitek. We did not get the final points negotiated. Expect to see the vote on that in the next week or so. Uh, quick hiring update. We have five new uh, associate retirement benefit examiner positions starting in uh, October. Uh, we expect to staff the other five with an increase uh, during the month of December. Uh, there is, we've had a little bit of a rough time hiring folks. Um, compensation is at, at the level of that title um, is within uh, some of our offers. Uh, but you know, you'll hear from us on that too in a second. Um, in anticipation of coming conversations about the staffing level, I uh, just wanted to update you on the auto enrollment legislation. Uh, Daniel Miller and representatives from DC 37 were up in Albany yesterday uh, talking to the governor's staff. Uh, there are letters from Local 891, thank you, from local uh, from DC 37, NAACP, uh, New York State, uh, United Teachers, and the United uh, Federated Teachers Unions in support. Uh, New York City Controller is supportive. I'm not just layering on, uh, we expect, well, um, I expect the government, to, the government to sign the legislation. Uh, it seems highly unlikely to this, but we'll see by the end of December. Um, I put in your green files, green folders, a little chart I'd like to take a look at quickly. Um, historically, uh, we have not had uh, strong workflow analysis internally at BERS. Um, and remember that to uh, get CPMS up and running in May 2017, uh, we sidelined workflow. Workflow will be part of the velocity project over the next two or three years. But we uh, implemented a work tracking effort because uh, we are concerned about backlogs, we're concerned about staffing levels. And uh, our tracking system will allow us to track individual productivity. It will allow us to track backlog and productivity by department. And what this chart will show you is we have backlog code. Um, this is something I will continue to keep you updated on and understand that velocity will take 22 of our most productive, uh, experienced people, which will put more pressure on our ability to, uh, act, to execute for our members. Yes, I see the biggest one. Uh, the service credit purchase. So now there's multiple categories of service credit purchase. This includes the biggest is prior service. Other categories include military service. Basically, it's any kind of credited service other than your membership. Right. And this is, um, so this is the least painful uh, backlog that we can produce, but it is a financial burden on the individuals because the interest accumulating on the past purchase continues to accumulate until they actually uh, fund that purchase. So it, it, while it's, it produces less uh, membership uh, pushback, but it does, it does cost a lot. Yeah, just to very briefly, um, they can't pay until we cost it for them. Right. right. So, so, you know, our 10 additional staff, you know, we're in the challenge to keep up. Uh, but we'll hear from us again on that. Uh, and then just, uh, there's been some disappointing performance of our call center in the last two weeks. Understand that we just came through a two week period where uh, we issued TBA data cleanup letters to uh, a number of thousands of members that had changes in their TBA account and that produced a influx of calls. And uh, we also solicited all, basically all our members who are getting union contract led uh, compensation bumps and compensation for previous periods in a lump sum. It's an opportunity for them to increase their TDA. We solicited them to increase their TDA. And uh, a lot of our members, they said yes, and they started to call. Um, that said, we've gotten through that, but there is a little bit of uh, consternation on the part of uh, some of our teacher-related uh, titles. And uh, we're working with UFP to, to work that through. 
Um, and I'll, I'll give you more updates uh, next board meeting. Um, and it's not all bad news. Uh, during the uh, presentation, you'll see later in the board meeting from Mark Davis, our uh, director of data analytics. He's going to talk a little bit about uh, some good information we've had about vendor surveys uh, for people who visit our office. And that's enough for me. Sorry, thanks a lot. Okay, next on the agenda is summer intern program effort, which will be presented by Martin Davis, Acting Director of Data Analytics, and Deputy Director of Operations Effort. Martin, would you like this? Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if I should go in the front or stay here. You're cool. But, uh, uh, so, um, during the summer, we had the opportunity to honor uh, 10 interns, approximately 50% for high school seniors, and you know, 50% for college freshmen. Um, they embarked on several projects, and one of the projects they embarked on, uh, which I was going to uh, was doing a, uh, a member satisfaction survey. Uh, the member satisfaction survey, uh, they both uh, designed, constructed, refined, and also did statistical calculations. Granted, it was by paper and pen, and it took the use data, uh, but uh, it was the same as an exposure. And uh, they really did a, a, a great presentation in front of our uh, senior management, supervisors, and uh, several other attendees uh, in the office. So basically, what this is is a recap of what they did. Uh, I worked with them, so they were under my guidance. I only added one slide in there because it's a little bit exotic, and I figured uh, let me not get too uh, uh, in depth with the statistics part of it. So, um, Here's the content of what I'm going to go over. Uh, and this is also in your, uh, I believe, the uh, uh, PowerPoint uh, uh, handout to your uh, packet. Um, so the objectives, why measure satisfaction, overview, and research methodology, survey questionnaire, design and construction, sample size, inferences about population of interest, uh, central limit theorem, results and statistics, and statistics. Limitations on the uh, on the results, uh, construct vulnerability, uh, errors, uh, intern recommendation, um, but they did one question. Uh, also, uh, and this is basically they gave a team statement on uh, the project utility in the uh, areas of um, so that's that. This is what we, why we did this. Uh, to analyze the quality of variable satisfaction. Uh, we wanted to assess that variable as to why it's important to the member. We wanted to see the performance of various team members contributing to satisfaction. We also wanted to understand preferences and how they would like to receive our information. And this is good for the future because we're embarking, hopefully, with model, on some uh, investment in technology. Uh, to gain insight into what attachments uh, and attachments uh, factors person control, um, to ameliorate uh, and uh, help uh, raise the satisfaction in business, and also to gain insight into the use of SIG, uh, uh, survey construct, and help manage interaction with others and business stakeholders. Why measure satisfaction? Perfect question. So it aligns with the reports with one of uh, Burris' uh, mission statements, which is uh, uh, the uh, efficient and effective delivery of uh, information to the members. Um, another reason is uh, people don't like to wait. Uh, time is a valuable thing, and uh, that's just an example of the opportunity for us to talk about. What we want to see is whether uh, the foregone opportunity from uh, basically um, uh, exceeds the uh, opportunity for some marginal benefit that they get uh, during their visit to Paris. Uh, a perfect example of that is a person thinking about retirement, their age eligibility, they have 19 or so years. Uh, they come in, yes, there's some uh, opportunity for some time uh, that he spends, but he finds out puts in a few more months, we'll get 20 years, and it will go up to 40% of that, I guess. So, uh, the opportunity for us to have uh, marginal benefit certainly seems fine. 
Uh, we wanted uh, to improve uh, employer uh, client satisfaction uh, and how African employers uh, with New York City and uh, uh, other comparables uh, to the forcing and maintaining design systems and also the uh, uh, external comparables. Uh, and then uh, another reason is obviously to uh, uh, Another satisfaction of the first usually um, transfers into a productive employee um, uh, going to work and also increases morale. And obviously, um, good mental satisfaction uh, shows that there's value in uh, In other words, when the budget cuts, hopefully there isn't. Uh, in this case, on other end, sex, uh, memory engagement is actually paying off. Well. Overview of research methodology. So, um, first shows a relevant sample of 3,038 people uh, representing less than three months of clients who visited our office. Um, in addition, the interns um, uh, interviewed recent visitors who visited the office during the period of uh, July 23rd to July 30th. Um, as a corollary, we also surveyed clients through the website, however, we did not use that, uh, uh, that data. And the rationale for that is there's no controls. A person could basically, we couldn't identify a unique uh, individual, so a person could be on that site you know, four or five times, or, or uh, there's just no way that I can uh, do any unique identification. So there was unique dummy variables uh, to allow for all privacy concerns some people to participate and also get the truth alliances. Uh, so it also allow for us to uh, uh, cross-reference corresponding uh, demographic data that we get through uh, uh, PMS extracts and also uh, charts and uh, the subclass. It's what we get a more refined analysis. Uh, for example, type, type of codes, um, wage profile, etc. Uh, the time deadline for the response was uh, July 30th, 2008. So we gave two weeks to the email responses. Survey question and design construction. Survey questions to design to be bias free, not to be leading, and to have one possible answer. In terms of also uh, evaluating the questions for validity uh, and reliability. Uh, validity to the questions accurately report uh, to measure what we want to know about our interest. Um, and they would face, primarily face the limited construct program. Um, after the feedback, the questions were further refined. Reliability relates to standard error consistency, um, primarily personal uh, with false answers, and or the questions that are esoteric. They'll just put down any answer just to finish it. Um, if it's simple, and we also did a combat software test, um, which is 0.8, which is, is fairly low. Well. Not oh, good. It's too high, you know, the micro redundancy questions, and it's too low, obviously, uh, we got some questions and problems. Okay, sample size. Because of concerns about reliability, we selected sam a sample size of all people that visited BERS um, within uh, three months. Um, and the reason for that is a uh, three month period we have configured the better recollection of their uh, interaction with BERS personnel and counselors there. Uh, further increase the sample size. We also um, um, uh, 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 gave questionnaires to actual people who visited, and that was 46. Um, we had a question on the website, but as I said before, we, we sort of uh, discounted that. Um, one problem that we had, um, some of the 3,038 email addresses uh, get inaccurate or missing data uh, on email addresses. Also, a big thing is we, we can get DOE email addresses, but there must be some domain issue uh, problems because it, uh, the, the DOE addresses do not, do not allow us to uh, successfully transmit the uh, questionnaire. So we have to sort of work with the DOE to see if we can alleviate that problem. Uh, that's, and I forwarded that information to uh, our IT people. Um, we we'll wait for uh, some comments. Yes, sir. Just a remark on that. I remember from my old corporate days, sometimes that a few departments would purposely limit uh, the number of people that receive an email from a specific source. 
So that would be to, to just prevent scanning of the family. Or the doors. So we would be It's not a thing. Uh, and we started in the uh, which we had uh, no problems with. Um, so I put just if he's missing and completely unreachable, we know that this is, we also sent the survey uh, to 2,118 valid email addresses uh, that we had, uh, most of the person uh, email addresses. Just a point, uh, uh, just a sort of gratuitous point. We just have a material we had uh, email addresses. The other city agency actually went through uh, the problem with you, that's the one that was at. So, uh, I don't know if that's good or bad, but just, just disappointed on the fire citation. Um, so there was a total of 312 completed surveys during uh, the July 18th to 2018 to the end of the period, and uh, 46 completed surveys that were announced by the agents. Uh, so this had a valid sample size of about 358, exactly 358. Um, and that was a fairly good confidence interval in this population. Uh, certain inferences can be made about the population uh, based on the sample. Um, so I'll put um, population is the point of 3,038 points in the MLS, 358 adequate sample. Population is defined more broadly as number of client satisfaction on the first visit on any given day. Certain inferences uh, can be subscribed with severe limitations. Um, and why? Um, just, uh, that's the central limit there, which um, just Sufficiently large number of random samples for the entire population will be normally distributed regardless of the uh, distribution of the population of large with this uh, uh, exponential center. So here's where they came from. Um, as you can see, um, not surprisingly, uh, 745 is the big one, uh, DOE school lunch, and 740 uh, DOE administrative. So we get higher than that. Um, the statistics on birds, um, six, which is actually very impressive, 60.18% gave five stars, the highest, for overall satisfaction based on their membership, uh, based on their interaction with staff. Um, and the average uh, mean was 4.25. Um, here's sort of a graphical picture, just for the blueprints of the graphics. Uh, it's superimposed on the normal distribution, not surprisingly, it's quite apparent. Um, um, this was included in the insurance presentation, I thought it was a little too exotic, but uh, I did some item response theory uh, metrics, and uh, I basically um, did it so you get 95% and 0.96 positive and negative, uh, and basically it's saying that for this sample, 95% uh, of the people that come in probably get a rating between 3.64 and 4.81, which is pretty good out of five. Uh, here's the, uh, the second item is the wait time, which is obviously you want to reduce that. Uh, there's the aggregate distribution of wait times. As you can see, uh, within uh, 30 minutes, it's approximately 75% of what all people get uh, served uh, by our ship. So what we did was we disaggregated uh, the data. Um, so 70.31 had no appointment, 29.69 had appointments. Uh, that's a steep uh, amount of people who have no appointments. Uh, so the wait time distributions for those with no appointments, we have to change that mix. And it's one of the recommendations. Um, you can see it's uh, approximately the same thing as before. The uh, people without appointments, but the people with appointments, big jump in wait times from the 15 to, 15 to 30 minute range. Um, so basically, I need more data to, to support this. Uh, it's, it's a pretty good guess that people without wait time, without appointments, are basically cutting into those uh, who have appointments. And that's some of the things we have to work on. Um, cost benefit to member, as I said before, was the foreground opportunity cost of member time less than margin benefit of the information. Going to the members, it was by 80%. Uh, 
which one would agree with that statement. Um, just keep in mind, this was done during the summer. So uh, there's an overall lines of people coming in for retirement-related uh, retirement uh, questions and issues. Uh, because usually most of our members are retired in the summer. And uh, the preferred method of information, email. Um, no doubt about it, by a large amount. Uh, we did some uh, dummy statistics uh, on the TDA R and D. Uh, 60, almost 68 percent answered in one. That might be a reflection on staff. That might be a reflection on other variables. Uh, but that's something that we're uh, uh, concerned about. Uh, there's other methods of satisfaction. Again, knowledge and uh, informed of staff. Uh, 83 percent very high. And friendly and amiable. 87.43. Uh, limitations, as I said before, it's only a three month time period. Many retirement, uh, retirements happen during this period. Retirement counseling is under the influence of the uh, uh, sample. Uh, biggest sample needs to be constructed. Many people have been on vacation during this time period also. Student participation rate. So every month, you're able to deliver and deal with the same Sample research may be used in other venues, uh, such as seminars. Uh, which I think is a good idea. Uh, we have the overall experience with SurveyMonkey, uh, and we can use this preliminary work to develop uh, sample questionnaire for members on a recurring basis. Uh, and it can also be used in other departments. And uh, on the intern recommendations, uh, so continue to survey a uh, questionnaire on a continual basis. We also need to do a Q analysis. Uh, I'm a big fan of Q analysis. Um, Seems that the mix of those visiting without appointments is extremely high uh, relative to those with them, so we have to do something there. We can also identify bottlenecks and other uh, uh, friction. Uh, recommend serving monkey, the exact size council, so you can members aware of TDA RDs and other features of TDA. It seems like there's, there's a lot of wrong answers on TDA. Um, invest in technology, um, and that's uh, something that will facilitate this. And then the interns made a team statement how this uh, project basically uh, fit with their career goals, their area of studies, etc. And finally, that's the end. Questions, comments? Uh, sorry, that's just a little bit. My apologies. No, not right. Very good. Not right. By the way, if you ever want to expand on anything, if you need more information, feel free to contact us. Tangential questions. Our interns, do they pay you or pay? And it, it is meant to, it's, as you can see, it's designed to be a substantive educational experience. But we're working on a real project which they're designing and executing. Uh, and you know, they're, they're doing the real things that they're learning. And the entry is what, high school seniors and college freshmen? Correct. About 50 50. It was 6 4. So I actually think it's like a small one that's actually sitting here and it's going to say um, So I don't know if we can actually say that. Yeah, no. And actually, next time we'll video the video of the presentation because they all have the presentation. It's actually been very good for you. Just take that back. For the individual. For the individual. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mario. That was great. Um, the next item on this agenda is calendar, calendar items 2 through 17, but we're in there in this first. Is there a motion to consider calendar items 2 through 17? One, is there a second? All right. Um, Alex, can you please tell us the ordinary business of the uh, Sure. Um, these resolutions are uh, covering all the retirements, uh, death benefits, and refunds um, processed by the system since the last time this board met.
contract through the end of August 2018. We're just voting to ratify the vote. All in favor, please raise your hands. Great. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, motion carries. Thank you. The next item on this evening's agenda is calendar item 19, authorization to enter into agreement with Gary Smithlip and Jack Ziegler, LLC, to provide project management services. Can I have a motion to consider this item? One. Second. Thank you. The agreement is to provide project management services to BRRRS in conjunction with the Vitek agreement for the next generation of CPMS that was approved by the board in July 2018. The board previously passed this resolution by a veto. We are just voting to ratify this vote. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hands. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. The next item on the agenda is calendar item 20. Authorization to enter into an agreement with CenturyLink Communications LLC to provide internet services. Can I have a motion to consider this item? Thank you. Can I have a second? Thank you. The board previously passed a resolution approving an agreement with CenturyLink. However, we're able to obtain more favorable pricing by blocking a longer contract term of 60 months as opposed to the previously approved 36 months. The board passed this resolution by EVO, so we are just voting to ratify this item. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hands. Thank you. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. The next item on the agenda is calendar item 21, amendment to the administrative budget for fiscal year 2019.
the uh, approved DC 37 agreement. Uh, that has been historically the case. Um, BERS has historically asked the board to approve that on a prospective basis just to allow it to handle it administratively. Um, that is also included. And then finally, uh, the new union agreement recasts the title compensation levels and that on top of our current hiring difficulties, hiring at the low end of these title requirements in ARVE, we are finding we are not competitive. So we have built in a 5% increase in our ability to compensate new employees. That is all included in this PS budget request increase of 1.37 million. If I haven't answered all your questions, she's just super minded is here to uh, support me, and she's been quite effective so far tonight. Um, if there are any questions, we'd be happy to respond. Okay, thank you, Sandy. Uh, all in favor, please raise your hands. Great. Any opposed?
accounts to the county or the and the pension fees. If this proposed legislation would bump up that cap to 30,000 to 50,000, and uh, that the pension fees would be to the so because it's the first time I was offered, there are many uncertainties in uh, regards to the position, uh, such as uh, you know, how many would just go higher, how much would they pay them, um, if they were higher, what would they be making if they're outside employment to bump them uh, to, to stop their pension. So because of this, we priced it not, you know, we didn't make the assumption on all that, but we did price it such that if you can give school resource costs to higher, I think it might be helpful to clarify that there is no current plan So this is the proposed legislation. So there's each.